What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. This is your first time joining us. My name's Matt. This big orange hunk of metal back here is a Clark 125C loader. And if you haven't seen the first video on this machine, it's been sitting since at least 2001. So that's 20 years plus that this thing has been sitting here and hasn't budged. And it also sat here with the oil and the filters and everything off of it. For an engine, this machine has the dreaded triple nickel 555 Cummins. And we were lucky enough to throw some fluids in it, pre-lube the turbo and some other things, and uh, threw a coolant line on. And this thing actually just kind of cranked right up. It was amazing. Uh, very little ether that I used to get it to prime itself. And this thing just popped right off. Also in the last video, I put air in the tires. That one held air just fine. This one here had a pretty quick leak. It bled off in maybe two, three hours. And this guy over here took air and it still has a little bit in it, but it's not really uh, fully inflated anymore either. So it has a slow leak. And then number four back here, I couldn't get this thing to take a drop of air. These tires have two valve stems on them. This one here is a dump valve. If you take that cap off, it should let all the air out instantly. That one down there is like the normal one that you have on your car. It has the little Schrader valve in it. And that's the one you're supposed to use to fill the tires. Now, I tried putting air through both of these valve stems and I cannot get it to take anything. I did not have the proper size tool to remove the valve core out of this one. So I got the tool today. I'm gonna to try and take that out, stick a wire down through it and see if I can't clean it out. And hopefully we can get it to take air. Cause you can see it's kind of sunk into the ground quite a bit. Also in the last video, due to an oversight on my part, I only had one new fuel filter for this machine. I did pick up a second new fuel filter and I filled it up and threw it on just a minute ago. So when we go to start it today, we probably will be working with a small air bubble in the system. So as I said, after slumbering for 20 years at least, this thing did pop right off and it ran pretty good. Not too smoky, but immediately we had some hydraulic leaks. So we'll address that now. So the next objective I have with this loader, I can't commit to buying it until I know that I can drive it out of here and to the farm because it's not that far. And the location that I'm at right here, there's absolutely no way you're getting a tractor trailer in here to haul this thing out of here. And not only that, there's no way to get it onto a trailer unless it can run and drive. So that's the goal today. We're gonna see why this thing isn't moving because in the last video I did try to throw it in forward or reverse and we had nothing. Now, after some research online, I did find that these have some sort of neutralizer. And if they don't have certain air pressure, then they won't let it go into gear. So we're going to investigate that and maybe see if we can't supply air from a compressor just to release the brakes and see if this thing moves. Also, this is our transmission dipstick here. One of the hydraulic leaks that we had wasn't actually hydraulic. It was a transmission leak. And... As you can see at the end of this 300 foot long dipstick, we got nothing. So I got five gallons of transmission fluid on the truck. We're going to go ahead and dump some in here until we get up on the stick. I'll tell you one thing, you got to pay to play with these big toys. And the quantities that I'm having to buy fluids and stuff, everything gets very expensive very quickly. The engine held seven or eight gallons of oil. Oh, and I spilled a little bit. This is five gallons of dextron transmission fluid this was 83 some dollars yeah 83 20 i think it was you gotta pay to play this game we'll have to get this above the full line on the stick and then start the engine top it off to the proper level because the torque converter will suck up a bunch of the fluid we'll see where we're at there I think it's reason that we're a little over full right now, which is fine because we're going to start it and it should suck up a bunch of the fluid. So. I guess it's time we'll go ahead and try to cold start this thing. Okay, as stated, I did put a new fuel filter on there, so it might crank a little bit. Contact.
ready, boys. Almost time to see if this thing moves. I'm excited. Everybody has their one true passion in life. Mine is by far getting big old iron like this up and moving again. I mean, it's got a stinking tree growing out of it. If it's got a tree growing out of it, it's been sitting long enough. So I think we're almost ready to move this machine or at least try to move it. And before I can move it, I, I do want to try to put some air in this tire and I'm afraid if I move it without air in there, I could pop it off the bead and then I'm stuck calling a tire guy. Whereas right now I might be able to get some air in this thing and it would hold long enough that I wouldn't have to call a tire service guy. I'm looking at easily a couple hundred dollars if I have to get a guy out here because I can't break these tires down. You need a special uh, boom on a truck and special tools to do it. None of which I have. Picked up the proper tool for removing the valve cores in these big tires. We're going to try and clean that valve stem out of there. Ooh, if I can even get it broke loose. So I got it out. It does appear to be dirty. I'm going to take a piece of wire that I twisted up here and try to jam it down in there and clean out that valve stem. We might have got lucky. I just got this wire to go down in there pretty far. Boy, I hope we did. If this thing would take air, we're going to think we're in business. Let me get the compressor fired up and stretch the hose over here. feeling supremely confident about it yet we'll give it a shot I'll reinstall our valve core here and see what happens like I said I'm not feeling real good about it I was able to clean the uh, dump valve over here the dump valve stem I was able to run that wire in there pretty good uh, I still couldn't get it to take air Here goes nothing. Yep, nothing. Exactly nothing. Son of a diddly. Well, <clears throat> by some miracle here, I did get it to end up taking some air. It's still not 100%, but it's, it's taking it so slow. I mean, I've literally had this thing on there for probably an hour now, and it's come up maybe halfway. So there's still a clog in there, but I ended up, I stuck it on there and had to stick my ear up against the air hose to, to even hear the hissing of the air to know that it was taking air. I'll call that good for now. That's good enough for us to move it. It's not gonna pop off the bead. Okay, I think it's officially time to see if this baby will move. I got air in all the tires here. This one leaks kind of fast, so I just finished pumping it up and it's leaking off currently, but it'll give us enough time. We can try to move this thing back and forth, make sure everything functions. I need to lift the bucket up to be able to move it, but I can't lift it very high right now. I only have the one line and it does not look healthy. So hopefully it'll do enough just to get the bucket up off the ground enough for us that we can pull forward. So anyways, guys, here goes nothing.
So we got our gear selector all the way up, which is in first. We're currently in neutral, and we are bleeding off hydraulics quickly. Interesting. All right, let's see if this baby will go. Oh, I felt it, it's trying. it looks now and it's not sunk into the ground a foot and a half man that's a big loader oh boys this thing is too cool for school man Whew. tire is still leaking but it doesn't sound like it's quite as bad actually i was kind of hoping that maybe a little bit of running would ease the leaking this thing is awesome that's a big stinking loader and look at this tree <laughs> that's actually probably close to a seven or eight inch tree down here at the base man i don't even bring a chainsaw with me all i got's a handsaw i'll go ahead and cut that thing off just get it out of the way so that when i'm done today i'm gonna pull it back here in this spot out of the way uh, I can't take it to the farm yet today. Got to do some more stuff. I got to get hydraulic lines made for it now that I know it runs. Make sure it's actually road ready. So let's see about taking this thing for a little drive here. There's a farm road that runs up the way here. And we can run it up in the field and see what it'll do. all the years I've been doing this uh, firing up old equipment junk cars tractors whatever it is and pulling it out of a spot that it sat in for a long time this is by far the coup de gras this is a big old grave site but no more alas she has risen and she is a beast seems like it's running pretty good the charging system and charging the batteries and everything. Haven't burned any oil. What a gem.
I said, I got no brakes. And to get this thing home, I gotta go down a couple pretty good hills. So this is a really good test right here, just seeing how this thing slows down and holds itself back in just first gear. I've run a bunch of these old loaders on farms and junkyards and everything else that don't have brakes and they never fix them. The systems are often pretty complicated, air over hydraulic, and uh, pretty problematic. So it's not worth it most of the time because look how slow I'm going. I'm not touching anything. And if I really had to stop right now for an emergency, I could just slam the bucket down and we'd be done. <clears throat> or I can throw it in reverse. Look at that. Instantly going the other way. Well, that was good timing. The buddy that turned me on to the uh, turned me on to the loader here. He wasn't here. He showed up just in the nick of time to let me use his machine to dig that tree out. I didn't want to just use it without his permission. I said, "Hey, can I dig that tree out of there rather than trying cutting it with a handsaw?" And he said, "Yeah, cool." So that helped out a lot. Got this thing parked up for right now. I got a leaky valve core on this tire. This is the one that really didn't want to take air. So we got a leaky valve core there. I'll go ahead and run to town. Just gonna grab four new ones so I can put new ones in every tire and know that that's not the issue why it's leaking. And uh, I gotta get some more hydraulic oil. I guess it's officially time to spend the money, get the lines made up for the loader arms here. Before I leave here, I'm gonna go ahead and dump this crap out of the bucket so I'm not going down the road with it. What else? Oh, I haven't done any of the curl functions either because there's some pitting on these cylinders, not real bad. But see, that little bit of rust pitting there can cause the seals to get tore up and they're already hardened and brittle and leaking a little bit. So I'm going to take some scotch Bright and really go over those cylinders good and make sure there's no rough spots that are going to tear up the seals anymore. And then, uh, yeah, put the new lines on and I think we'll be just about ready to take this thing down the road. Alright, so here we are back out here a few days later. Now we know that this big behemoth moves. I went ahead and splurged on the hydraulic lines here that we need. I got 
the one that blew and I got the twin on the other side that looks like it's about to blow any second so figured as well buy once cry once um <laughs> if you guys got an exact guess of how much you think these cost pause the video and drop it down below in the comments did did you guess I bet you didn't both of these hydraulic lines together they're 42 inch lines this is just a cap on the end here 42 inch long four wire hydraulic hose with two fittings five hundred and forty two dollars sixteen cents for those two lines wowzers gotta pay to play <laughs> i had them that, that was hard to match up the length of that line because it had broken clean in half i should have taken the other one off and had them match the one that was still in one piece oh man this thing's a couple inches longer and i think that is going to make life very difficult for us there's the block off slug that i put in there I was really concerned about that getting in there. Well, that's one installed. Can't even quite get to this one yet. I gotta yank all this crap out of here. Vintage. Oh man. Now I should be able to zap these off. Here's a better look at that hose. I think she was just about at the end of her life, huh? See the way the casing's all bubbled and bulged around there? Ugh. Caught it just in time, I'm sure. All right, so with those hydraulic lines installed, we should be ready to lift the bucket skyward and dump out this crap that's in there. But before we can do that, we gotta, we gotta put some attention towards these curl cylinders. Ugh to hike just to get over here all right now we're up here above the bucket looking at our cylinder here and see this chrome surface well obviously that slides in and out of the cylinders here and this little bit of pitting that we got going on in the cylinders that is going to tear up the seals in there that keep the oil inside the cylinders so i got some scotch bright here we're going to spend some time polishing our rod you know what i mean and uh we gotta get those little bits of pitting knocked off of there and smoothed back out it's still always going to be a little bit wet because of that pitting the oil will stay in those pits as it comes in and out but at least it won't uh destroy our seals more than they already are Ideally, you know, you would disassemble the cylinder and send the rod out to get re-chromed and then put it back together with new packing, but uh, not in the budget for this machine, unfortunately. They both turned out about the same. I think this one has a slight bit more pitting than the other one, but should do the trick.
Well, we were so close to victory here. I was ready to pull out and this tire had sunk down in the mud and I couldn't tell. It looked like it was still full. And apparently it wasn't. It was flat. I pulled forward and it come off the bead. So this is the one that had the pretty quick leak to it anyway. So maybe that's a blessing in disguise. And then from there we went to a leaking transmission line back here. That guy right there is pouring transmission fluid. And I even looked earlier for leaks when I filled up the transmission. Made sure it was topped off and it was not leaking. I didn't see anything. I throw it in reverse now, it leaks. Well, I got a tire guy here right now. He's breaking down the rim. Getting this thing all fixed up. There's the O-ring that came out of the tire. No good. Okay, well the tire guy just left. That tire is not leaking currently. I can't hear it anyway. You can see these are pieces of scale from off of that tire. That was a $344. Ouch. So at least he got it back on there. It's not leaking. This is the one that leaked fast. So it's good that that's taken care of. The O-ring needed replaced. And I replaced a couple lines here. I did it hastily and didn't bother to record it because that guy was kind of, uh, he was on his way and I didn't know if I was going to have to move the machine for him to work on it. But you see there's a fuel line that goes from this side of the machine over to there and down and around and up. That uh, was dripping, so I replaced that guy. And I replaced that transmission hose right there that was leaking. That's the uh, main pressure from this, where you put the fluid into the torque converter. So. Now that that's fixed, we should be good to drive it. I'm going to go ahead and try to crank this thing up now. Like I said, I replaced that fuel line, so there was a big air bubble in the line. I did pressurize the tank and crack a fitting and bleed out as much as I could. Hopefully it uh, doesn't give us too much trouble getting started. It didn't the last time, so knock on wood. It's a rainy, nasty day, so it's not really a good day to be driving something like this down the public road. So we're going to wait until it dries up. Hopefully tomorrow looks good. And get this old baby stretching her legs down the road. I'm excited and nervous at the same time. I think I mentioned, I don't know if it was in this video or the first video, to get this thing out of where it's sitting is a long, tight, windy farm driveway. Pretty steep. I mean, it's not steep for a car or something, but for something like this with no brakes, a little sketchy so well it's the friday before easter that's good friday which means it's a good friday to move this wheel loader two three miles down the road to my farm hopefully we make it without any trouble
here, the most intense part I was worried about, and it's going pretty good. Our temperature's staying right around 180. Everything's looking good. There we go, I just shipped the neck of the port. I had to shift down to third to pull the hill. I could not have asked for any better results out of that. The old girl drove over here. I think I think it was like 2.2 miles, just fine. All went well. Uh, not the fastest ride in the world, and a little bit of bumpy because there's like a flat spot on the one tire. But it's here. It made it. I didn't leave any trails of fluids or oils. The engine didn't overheat. The gears didn't slip. I didn't blow a hydraulic line. It went perfectly. So what's next for this big girl, right? Uh, I've kept you guys kind of in the dark on the price. I told you what my intention was when I first uh, showed it off in the last video. So I bought it to flip it. I bought it for a price that I could not lose money on. It weighs 50,000 pounds. It's a big machine. So it's got a running engine, so I knew I could sell that. Even if all else failed, I could sell the engine off and probably get most of my money back right there. Between hydraulic cylinders and odds and ends that are all over this machine, I could 
scavenge pieces off of it and keep those and have them to build future projects or whatever I mean I could see those tilt cylinders being some serious log splitting rams <laughs> the bucket the buckets in super good shape I could probably sell that thing all by itself and then the rest of it could be cut up for scrap or whatever but me personally I hate seeing stuff go to waste like that old tired iron just kind of has a soft place in my heart and I don't like to see it go to waste so Somebody will buy this thing. It's a running, driving, functioning loader, okay? Sure, it needs some little stuff. I'm gonna throw a coat of paint on it in the future here and probably some other little TLC bits. But overall, it does what it's supposed to do. It drives forward and backward, it picks up dirt, it dumps the dirt. What more do you really need in a loader? So some of you might think this is overpaying. There was actually, I've never seen the comment section so divided on a subject whether I should have bought this or not. Without knowing the price, half of you said, buy it, half of you said, run away. And of course, being be, me being me, I was like, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so I paid 1500 US dollars for this 50,000 pound machine. And she was more than happy to get it out of there. And in fact, as quickly as she accepted my $1,500 offer, I probably could have gotten it for less. But I'm not upset about that. I think it was a fair deal. And... I am going to, like I said, do a few little small repairs to this thing, make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, and slap a for sale sign on it. If you go onto the Machinery Trader website, you can find similar units in similar condition, maybe a little bit better condition. They're asking $15,000 for them. So I would be more than happy to get like eight or 10000 out of this thing. I haven't decided yet. And before you guys bombard me with messages saying, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, because I know there will be a bunch of those people. I'm not at that point where I'm ready to sell it yet. I do want to improve it some, and then I'll think about selling it. And when the time comes, I will let you guys know. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I've been hitting some milestones on the channel lately. As of this morning, I was at 180,000 subscribers, so that's really exciting. I feel like I'm going to be at 200,000 here before I know it, so that's, that's pretty cool. If you guys want to see something crazy for 200,000 subscribers, maybe drop a recommendation down in the comments. Give me some ideas because I'm kind of bad at that kind of stuff. I thought about doing something cool for 100 and it never materialized. So uh, here's your chance. But anyways, guys, that wraps up today's video. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already, tickle that subscribe button so you can see more stuff like this coming back to life and getting fixed up. There's going to be more on the... Uh, antique road grader i'm fixing christine more on that coming real soon and uh make sure you're subscribed so i can see you there thanks for watching later real quickly at the end here too guys i want to throw this stuff in here i got a couple gifts sent over to me i just want to say thank you for because these things are uh super nice they're from super generous people uh i can't say thank you enough my buddy howie uh sent me over this diesel life hat and uh this awesome little it's like a chunk of a log that he got laser etched with diesel creek in there so i'm gonna find the right set of keys or something to hang that on it'll look cool but i think that thing's really neat um so thank you howie for that and then an artist that subscribed to the channel lynn booch butcher boucher i apologize i'm terrible with names i'm probably saying that wrong but she did an amazing job on this portrait of the old auto car. I mean, that's a pastel painting. I guess you call it a painting, even though it's pastels. It's, it's amazing. I mean, crazy amount of detail she was able to squeeze into this thing. And uh, she was nice enough to frame it and send it over to me. So big thank you to her as well. And I'll put the, uh, put the information for her down in the description in case you guys are interested in having something done. I guess she does custom work too. So check her out. <laughs>